Hello and welcome to the next episode of Python for Chemical Engineering Calculations. Today I'm going to continue talking about NumPy and in particular I'll show a few ways to create NumPy arrays. So let's start from importing NumPy and if you remember lists and ranges there is a way to create the range which is very convenient and there you that that would give me the numbers from 0 to 4 and you can create the range which starts let's say it's 6 and 10 10 not included with a step of 2 right there is a way to do a similar thing in NumPy there is a function called a range and you can create a NumPy array using a range in exactly the same fashion so my array C, which you can see here in the variable explorer, is this array from 0 to 4. So the AND point is not included, right? Well, let me show another example. D is NumPy range from 6 to 10. With a step 2, if I print 10, I get only two numbers because 10 is not included, right? Or if I don't specify the step I can get e numpy at range from 6 to 10. So that would give me integer numbers from 6 to 9, including 9. In addition to integer numbers, of course, we can include non integers. Let's say f is numpy at range from 0 to 1, the step 0, 1, all right? which will give me an array from 0 to 0 0.9 with a step 0 0.1. There is an alternative way to do it with the function linspace. So linspace, instead of specifying a step, you specify a number of points you want to break your interval into. So if I want to get this array from 0 to 1 with a step 0 0.1, and if I want to include the endpoint, I would use g equals numpy and space from 0 to 1. And the number of points I need is 11. All right. So g is now a similar numpy array, which includes the endpoint by default. Speaking of defaults, if I don't specify the number of points, and let's say use h as a numpy and space from 0 to 1, the default number of points would be 50. So h would be broken into 50 points, uh, which is not very convenient if we include the end points. So obviously, we want to have rather 51 interval or 101 interval and so on. We can also do that if we want to exclude the endpoint we can say i equals numpy and space from 0 to 1 and point equals false and if i print i now i will get my interval broken into 50 points so the endpoint is not included Okay, similarly to linear spacing, we can use logarithmic spacing. For example, I can have j equals numpy log space from 0 to 3 with 4 points. So j in this case is generated as the log 10 of these numbers. So these are actually 10 to power 0 to 10 to power 3 with the four points. That's what I'm getting as a result of it. So in addition to having these ascending numbers or descending, you can create those as well. Sometimes it's convenient to create arrays of zeros or arrays of ones. And there is a function for that. If I want to have an array of zeros, I generate k equals numpy zeros. And the only variable I need to use here is the shape of the resulting array. So if I have numpy zeros of 3, I get an array of 3 zeros. If I have, let's say, numpy 
zeros and then let's say three by three then i get a three by three matrix of zeros similarly we can create numpy ones and again we can specify here whatever shape we want let's say it's going to be two by three and let me call it m and if i print it i get two by three array of ones finally if you have a certain array you can create array of zeros or array of ones using the shape of the original array for that we have a function zeros like and also a function ones like so n equals to numpy zeros like and let's say i want to create an array like my m right so n is the shape same shape as m but instead of ones it's now filled with zeros and let's create an array of ones like and let's say i want to make it like my k so o is a one-dimensional array of three elements which are all ones the last thing i want to show is how to create an array from function let's say we want to have the consequent elements in our array being well the squares of the element numbers so for this purpose we can use numpy from function function which takes a function as an input and this is the case when lambda functions are especially convenient because you don't need to define your lambda function elsewhere you can define it right here in line so you can get lambda lambda i for each i which will be the element number we will create the value of i squared the only thing we need to specify we need to specify the shape and the shape is specified as a tuple so it has to be in these curl brackets here so if i execute that i will get an array from 0 to 25 which is each item in this array is a square of the number of the element okay and i'll show the last example you can do it for more complicated arrays as well so let me create numpy from function lambda i and j i'm going to create a two-dimensional array where the elements will be calculated based on their number in the rows on and in the column and the shape i'm going to use would be three by four if i print q now i will get these two-dimensional array calculated using this formula